Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Mario Kart 7! Yeah, remember that one? It, uh, it existed. Much like Wii, I have a lot of nostalgia for it as I played it a ton when I was younger. But there's definitely a reason why it's often considered one of the most forgettable entries in the series. Double Dash has two characters per cart and insane handling. DS has mission mode and custom emblems for your cart. Wii has the most insane item balancing in the series, bikes, and Funky Kong. Seven has... Uh... I mean, it introduced gliding, underwater driving, and cart customization. You know, all those things that 8 also has. So, what reason is there to go back to 7 exactly? Honey Queen? Is that the only thing 7 has that never came back in anything else? Okay, enough bitching. How are the courses? Well, dear viewer, we're in for quite a treat, actually. Even though 7 is often neglected by Mario Kart fans and historians alike, the joke's on them! Because it arguably has what is, on average, the best selection of courses in the entire series. 8 obviously has the most volume and variety, but it also has plenty of stinkers, especially with the booster course pass factored in. But 7's roster of tracks is miraculously solid, with no outright awful courses among them. How is this possible? I mean, spoilers, but it doesn't really have the most impressive selection of new courses compared to other games in the series. None of them are terrible, obviously, but most aren't amazing. Well, my friends, this is where the magic of Mario Kart 7 Retro Tracks comes in. Holy shit, they cooked with these courses. They brought back fan favorites from every game in the series except Super Circuit and crafted one of the most insane course lists in all of Mario Kart. I guess they finally caught on to which courses the fanbase adores, because pretty much all of them are here. This is Seven's big claim to fame, the thing that made it stand out from any other game in the series. Until the booster course pass completely stole its thunder and brought most of these back. Sorry, Seven. But that's okay. Let's enjoy the 11 years of bliss when this was the best selection of courses in Mario Kart. And go ahead and rank them all. This was easily the hardest time I've had with any of these course rankings. Because again, look at the mountains of gold I'm working with. My ranking constantly changed on an almost daily basis. But I think I've settled on an order that I'll be pretty confident in for a week or so. Then it'll probably change again. Oh well, this video's gotta come out sometime, so let's do it. Starting with the C tier. Yep, that's right, there's no D tiers. That's how good, on average, the tracks we're working with are. So let's jump on in. Disappointment in the game of life! Once again, there's no outright awful courses in Mario Kart 7, but ultimately, someone had to be on the bottom, and I don't think anyone would argue against the relative lameness of N64 Luigi Raceway. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just, when a game has this strong of a retro selection, a remade course that's just doing the bare minimum is gonna stick out in a bad way. You're able to race on these bleachers on the right now, a feature I never use. Aside from that, the hot air balloon, tunnel, jumbotron, all of that is still there. But there's nothing really special or updated about this course compared to the N64 version. I ranked it towards the middle of the pack in that game since the tricky controls there gave a lot more value to the simpler tracks. But here, this this game has intuitive controls and you can glide on a Super Nintendo track now. What exactly is a faithful recreation of N64 Luigi Raceway supposed to offer me? Again, not bad, but not a single person's favorite track in this game. I mean, what is the theme here? Underwater? It's boring! I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't rank Cheap Cheap Lagoon as the worst brand new course in Mario Kart 7. This one only exists as a tutorial on how to drive underwater. It's, uh, it's just like regular driving, except slower. There are some hills and clams for you to trick off of, and the optional narrow glider path towards the end is kinda neat, I guess? Otherwise, though, yeah, this one kinda blows. It's insanely short, and it's one of very few Mario Kart courses that doesn't feel authentic or inspired. It really just feels like, here is the course with a shit ton of water so you can see how cool the underwater gimmick is. And like, you know you can show that gimmick off and also have cool track design with a unique theme, right? Yeah, there's a reason I never really see anyone clamoring for this course's return. It's a massive step down from its big brother, Cheap Cheap Beach, and I probably devoted more thought to it in this ranking segment than you have in the past 12 years. It's Toad Circuit, baby! Toad Circuit! Fuck yeah!
I mentioned in a previous video that my friends and I are ironically obsessed with Toad Circuit, because it's one of the lamest possible choices Nintendo could have put in the Booster Course Pass. But we're not here to talk about that version today. That one is Toad Circuit! This one is Toad Circuit. You know, it's fine. It's a basic bitch starter course. There's not really much to say. I like the Toad Balloons. I like the fact that this is the prettiest version of Toad Circuit that exists. Overall, it does a good job of easing new players into a race, while also having a glider ramp to try out, and a couple shortcut opportunities towards the end. For a baby course, it's not devoid of fun. But at the same time... Yeah, let's be real, it's not ranking any higher than this. How about I pull up my handy dandy starter course ranking sheet to see where it stacks up on there, though. Uh, let's see, last time I appointed figure 8 circuit the greatest starter course in history solely because of Patrick's ironic enjoyment for it? I guess I could do the same with this one. Oh wait, no, never mind. This is just Toad Circuit, not Toad Circuit! So I gotta be legit with this one. Uh, it goes under Double Dash Luigi Circuit and Luigi Raceway, but above GBA Peach Circuit and Luigi Circuit Wii. This was a stupid fucking idea, why am I still keeping a ranking of these? Build you from his castle! How is this the third Mario Kart game in a row to bring back a GBA Bowser's Castle course? You guys know that Super Circuit had other courses, right? Like, cool courses with unique themes that would greatly benefit from a remake? Especially in this game that was dedicated to bringing back fan favorites from across the series? But no, they did Super Circuit so dirty here, only giving it one retro course. GBA Bowser Castle 1. The simplest and shortest out of all the Bowser's castles. Thanks. I don't know, it has cool music and plenty of thwomps to dodge. Plus, I really like this new optional glider that just lets you soar over these ramps. For the most part, though, it's painfully forgettable. I don't know why this series did such a poor job of representing Super Circuit until the DLC of Mario Kart 8 finally made them remember, oh yeah, that game had some good-ass courses. <sighs> we'll get there soon enough. Neo Bowser City is one of those base-breaking courses where half the fanbase loves it and the other half can't stand its fake ass. And I am firmly on the side of the haters with this one. This has always been a very boring and unspecial course to me. It has good turns, but that's just about all it has. The atmosphere here just feels more tacky than cool. Like it gives me the same vibes as Metroid Prime Federation Force. The rain effect doesn't really add much and the music is also pretty forgettable. It's not the worst thing in the world, but like, if I wanted to play a mostly pretty flat course with barely any of the features afforded by modern track design incorporated into it, I would just boot up Super Circuit. There is a Bowser! Castle. Yep, three Bowser courses in a row. This is just not his game. I honestly didn't think it was possible to mess up a Bowser's Castle track this badly. But, uh, seven found a way! It's just a mess, consisting of all sorts of random elements that don't mesh well at all. Every Bowser's Castle has a distinct, memorable element to it. Double Dash, Wii, and 8 all had a giant mechanical Bowser doing different things to the track each time. DS had that spinny tube you got to stay on. N64 had a legitimately creepy atmosphere with bizarre, unexplained garden areas and Marty! What does this one have? Uh, it also has a spinny tube. Just a much shorter and less memorable one. Uh, there's a random underwater section, which, like, how are there lava geysers underwater? What's going on? Then there's some easily avoidable cracks in the road, and a big glider section, and then it's over. To be fair, the best part of this track is probably the glider part. It's fun to go through this big goalpost and choose where you land back on the ground for the second and third laps. But that's pretty much it. This track is really just a collection of half baked ideas that don't coalesce and which ultimately ends way too soon. It's super short and it feels even shorter because none of it sticks in your mind once it's over. It's not awful, but right now it's the only real contender for being my least favorite Bowser's Castle in the entire series. Maybe it'll have some competition when I play Super Mario Kart, but yeah. In my honest opinion, a baffling misfire for what's otherwise an incredibly solid series of tracks. Like why is this part of the castle flooded? Did he just forget to pay the plumbing bill? Someone please explain this nonsense. 
Daisy Hills wins the only marginally better than Toad Circuit award. I swear to God, this might just be the worst mushroom cup in the entire series. This track isn't terrible. It's kind of the gliding tutorial that gives you a really cool opportunity to fly to different areas. I like the optional ramps on these houses, but other than that, it's pretty short and forgettable. The mountain goats are a cute obstacle and I like all these hot air balloons, but man, am I struggling to think of any real reason to play this course. It's serviceable enough and that's the best thing I can really say about it. This game did not mess around with the DS track selection. It is all bangers all the time. What the f is that one? Oh yeah, DK Pass. The course that I always forget exists in DS and the one that I always forget exists here. Uh, did they miss the memo that these were all supposed to be fan favorites? Who invited my man Blood, bro think he on the team? Yeah, I don't know. My thoughts are pretty much unchanged from the DS version. It's a fine enough snow course with a nice added glider and pretty music, but it's still the weakest DK track and one of the bottom three retro courses in this game, which like the the fact that I'm saying that about a course whose biggest problem is that it's just kind of forgettable is insane. I cannot stress enough that Seven's retro selection popped the f off. Anyway, we're now moving on to the B tiers. Some good ass courses, starting with... Alright, I know some of you might think this is a bit of a sneak, but believe me, no one hates generic flat SNES retro courses more than I do. So when I tell you the 3DS version of SNES Mario Circuit 2 is actually pretty decent, you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, it's short and relatively uneventful, but the layout of this course does allow you to hold insanely long drifts, which is pretty neat. And there's plenty of opportunities to boost through the sand with mushrooms. Oh, and uh, not sure if this is worth mentioning, but there's also a big glider segment. Yeah, this edition is easily the star of the show for this remake. The original version of this course had a massive jump. So naturally, that's the SNES track you would want to adapt to the game with gliding in it. And it's a damn cool adaptation. I love flying over this last turn and especially getting some extra airtime by tricking off this giant pulsating yellow line. It's satisfying and a fun update to an archaic archetype. I'm a simple man. I think flying is cool. End of story. Also as an aside that doesn't really affect the ranking, here's a really cool video about the insane shortcuts available on this course. Check it out if you got the time. So out of all the Nitro courses on this list, the one that I labored over the position of the most was probably Rosalina's Ice World. I don't know what to make of this course. The track design is decent, I don't know. There's a cool curve towards the beginning and a nice section where you choose between driving on the ice or underwater. It's not bad or anything, just kind of bland and not necessarily Rosalina themed outside of the very end where you see Comet Observatory domes on the sidelines. It just feels off. Like, why couldn't these domes have been incorporated into the course itself? I feel like Rosalina as a character just has the potential for much richer track design than this. But let's be totally fair here, the characters whose names are on the track can be somewhat arbitrary and not really mean anything. But even so, if you took Daisy out of the cruiser or Waluigi out of the pinball, you're left with some cool ass tracks that have very unique themes and layouts. Meanwhile, I feel like being tied to Rosalina is kind of all this track has. You take her name out and it's just an ice world. It really makes you start to realize that nothing much is going on here thematically outside of the tenuous connections to Mario Galaxy and its most popular character. Ultimately, it's not bad or frustrating to race on, which I guess is kind of a miracle for an ice course, but it's just kinda bland. Even the music sounds forgettable and it doesn't even attempt to incorporate any galaxy motifs. It's just generic ice track song. I don't know, could be a lot worse, but could be a hell of a lot better. A princess, though, is in another castle. Mario Circuit in this game is fine, it's decent, it's whatever. I feel like a lot of people soy out over this one because, oh, you can go in the castle. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's also pretty cherry blossoms, some pipes that shoot air for you to get glide time, a big pipe for you to trick off of. Like, yeah, it does the best with what it can do while also having to adhere to the curse of being a Mario Circuit track. It can't go too crazy or too special, but... Yeah, for what it is, it's pretty solid. One of the better Mario Circuit tracks in the series, but I don't think that's saying a whole lot. Fire, 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 fire! Rock, 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 rock Mountain. 
or Alpine Pass. Take your pick, the name is boring either way. Much like Cheap Cheap Beach in Mario Kart DS, I feel like this is the textbook definition of a good course that doesn't do too much to stand out besides that. The best aspect of this track is how it uses the glider. It's probably one of the best courses in the game in that regard. You get some insane air time from this section towards the middle, and it's a blast. Same goes for the section right after the finish line, where on laps 2 and 3, you can glide right past some of the opening turns. It's a really liberating feeling. Going up the mountain and dodging boulders is pretty fun too, so yeah, overall this course sounds pretty great. What's wrong with it? Well, the theme. Obviously, gameplay reigns supreme, and this one does have good gameplay, but I honestly almost always forget about it solely because of how generic it all feels. I mean, look at those mountains in the background. Those are damn new Super Mario Bros. mountains. I know we were in the thick of those games when this course first came out, but nowadays, looking at it, it's like, wow, grass and rocks. What a riveting course theme. Grass! The music hasn't really stuck with me either. It's a good course, like I said. Just not one I ever really want to revisit all that much. A great showcase for the glider, not a great showcase for anything else, really. It's an entry ticket for the Bizarre Bazaar! Shy Guy Bazaar is the best the Mushroom Cup has to offer. It's good, and that's about it. I think the aspect of this course that's really special is the theme. Combining Arabian Nights with little touches from Super Mario Bros. 2, it's a really cool idea. The music is nice as well. I enjoy flying past Shy Guys on magic carpets and going through this bazaar. And the actual track layout is... Uh, uh. Yeah, the actual gameplay of this course isn't particularly memorable or special to me. It's decent enough, but overall the theme carries this one hard. It's like the opposite of Rock Rock Mountain. It would be cool to see it back in a future Mario Kart game, but I'm not really losing sleep over its absence. The Rainbow Connection. SNES Rainbow Road was the perfect choice to end this game's retro selection, but that doesn't make the track itself perfect. It's pretty looking and it has some nice new additions like this ramp in that one middle split section. But I can't be the only one really underwhelmed by the tiny ass shockwaves the thwomps make, right? You're supposed to be able to trick off of them, but doing so is pretty unsatisfying, honestly. I guess it's better than no shockwaves at all. But yeah, this edition could be better. And it will be in the next game, but we'll get to that another time. Overall, this is still a really good course with lovely music and atmosphere. It's lost a bit of the difficulty luster that it had in the old days, but I don't mind too much. It's nice. And if they have to fill some of these spots with Super Nintendo courses, this is definitely one of the most worthwhile picks. I think I'm cheating. Marco Woohoo tries to recapture the same magic as Woohoo Loop, but falls a bit short. Truth be told, I don't even know why we needed two Woohoo Island courses. You could have just kept it at the one course and then the battle map. But Maka Woohoo's here anyway, and while it's mostly solid, the first two sections don't do much to justify its existence. Driving through the waterfall cave and by the castle is cool, but when the course is named after the island's volcano, you're kinda setting us up for disappointment by not letting us drive through said volcano. That was the coolest part of the island flyover mode in Wii Sports Resort, and it could have been the coolest part of this Mario Kart course. But nope, no lava for you, sorry. While that's a bummer, the third section does at least justify the existence of this course with its ending. This killer glide along the beachfront. One of the longest glides in the entire game. It's pretty exciting, and the track has great atmosphere taking place at sunset. It's not as pretty as Wii Sports Resort sunset, but it'll do. Overall, a really good track that just kind of exists in Woohoo Loop's shadow. But did Woohoo Loop have an exploit that allowed players online to jump into the water and skip the entire second section, thus making it so this was the only course people picked online since they could cheat and win the game until Nintendo patched it? Good times. Good times. Speaking of good times, I had those on the A tier courses, so let's talk about them. It's a goddamn dinosaur. Can't believe I'm saying this considering how I found the GameCube version of Dino Dino Jungle to be kinda mid, but this 3DS version just does it for me for some reason. They widened the bridge parts making them a lot less frustrating, started offering tons of trick opportunities on the various geysers, and perhaps best of all, added in glider segments. These enhanced the course immensely because now you can just fly past the dinosaur's head in any direction you choose. And it feels so much more dynamic and exciting than it did in the Double Dash version. It's crazy how a plethora of little changes here and there can change a somewhat weak course into a wonderful standout. Okay, now it's halftime. You know what that means. Let's dive into battle mode. It's exactly like Mario Kart Wii's, but this time you can choose not to play with teams. That alone makes this at least 37 times better than Wii's. 
It's a functional enough battle mode that isn't bad, but also isn't really great. With pretty standard iterations of Balloon Battle and Coin Runners, you could do a lot worse, but it's nowhere near on the same level as 64 or DS. Maybe if you could turn off the timer and make Balloon Battle elimination based, it would be better. I don't know. And also, maybe if you made it so 10 coins wasn't the maximum amount you could get in Coin Runners, then that mode would be better. You know, maybe. But I think another factor that makes this battle mode pretty forgettable is the courses. There's there's only six, and I wouldn't exactly call most of them standouts. Number six, GBA Battle Course 1, the worst and most boring battle course from Super Circuit, oh goody. It's still boring and there are now pointless moles and a pointless ramp in the center, just what the doctor ordered. At least the music is good. Number five, Sherbet Rink. It's so forgettable that initially in the script I accidentally just called it Sherbet Land. Now that's embarrassing. It's made of annoying slippery ice and the obstacles are practically worthless, it's just a big icy circle. Riveting. At least it looks pretty. Number four, DS Palm Shore. Okay, it's a little bit better than it was in DS, since the addition of underwater driving lets you go anywhere at any time now. And hiding under the water can be fun. But theme-wise, it's still got nothing going on. Wow, it's a beach. That's crazy. Number three, N64 Big Donut. It's inherently improved by having eight players now, rather than the original four. So there's more use for the big empty spaces the map originally had. And there are temporary glider ramps that get you from one side to the other. A pretty fun way to escape someone on your tail. Still not mind-blowing, but it wins the most improved award out of all the retro battle tracks in this game. Number two, Honey Bee Hive. Now we're getting into the really good stuff. Honey Queen kinda sorta gets her own battle map, which is aesthetically and thematically pleasing. Tons of rooms to traverse through and hide in, a general air of franticness thanks to the music, bees, and honey traps, it's got it all. Basically the new Twilight House, except bee theme. Sounds like a banger to me. And number one, Woohoo Town. Is anyone surprised? An inspired choice with so many landmarks, places to run and hide, places to duke it out, and it takes place at night to complement the other Woohoo courses being a daytime and sunset, respectively. Just outstanding. No notes with this one. It's got an excellent layout for a battle map, and it's an overwhelming source of Wii Sports Resort nostalgia. A winning combo for sure. Overall, two great maps, two fine ones, two I can never remember the existence of. Why didn't they bring back any of the Wii maps? You took my only Mario Kart Wii representation. Now I'm gonna starve. The only thing that could make me feel better now is if I talk about Squarespace, so let's do that. Squarespace is an amazing online website builder that enables you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Create your own online store to sell your products. Whether they be physical, digital, or service products, you better believe Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Hop on in with one of their professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then make it your own by customizing the design, updating contents, and adding whichever features you need. Any Squarespace template can do anything you want, allowing your idea, brand, or business to stand out. And on any device, too. You can even host video content using Squarespace. Organizing your video library, showing off your content on beautiful video pages, and selling access to exclusive videos with member areas. The possibilities are near limitless. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My ship sails in the morning. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Oh my god! I'm gonna be totally honest, you guys. I think we've all been sleeping on Wario Shipyard. And I'm including myself in that, because for years, I just thought it was kinda lame and whatever. It's not a particularly talked about course within the fandom. And while nobody outright dislikes it, nobody's bending over backwards to gush about it for days on end. But maybe they should. This sunken boatyard is such a great concept for a course, and they really commit to the theme. Nearly half the place is flooded, there are anchor obstacles, you shoot yourself out of a stationary ship's cannon, and the whole place is Wario colored. Mustn't forget that. It makes for such a unique look for what could have been a very drab looking track. On top of that, it's so varied in terms of its elevation. So many inclined turns and a near vertical ship segment that's just begging to have anti-gravity on it. It feels haphazard and treacherous, but in a way that's purposeful since it matches the theme of an abandoned graveyard for ships. Plus, one of the ships has minecarts from Wario's gold mine on it. I really like 
like that detail. I think this is kind of a surprise banger that more people should really be talking about. The one thing that's not stellar is the music. For the life of me, I could not tell you what course this is from if I just heard it on its own. But otherwise, yeah, it's a damn great course. Who knew? Man, I spent hours of my life stomping N64 Koopa Beach. Um, excuse me, it was called Koopa Troopa Beach originally, but I guess it's a trade-off for losing the Troopa in its name. Now the big rock formation actually looks like a damn Koopa Troopa. How nifty. Aside from that, this is easily the retro track that benefits the most from the addition of underwater driving. Now you're encouraged to go down there with coins instead of running the risk of drowning if you go too deep. Plus, you can glide into that shortcut tunnel now, but only if you have a mushroom and only if the tide is low enough for you to reach the ramp. It's a very neat change that, on top of the underwater additions, make this course feel so much more dynamic and a great fit for Seven's mechanics. They made an already banger course even banger -er -er -er, and I couldn't be happier. Slide to the left! Piranha Plant Slide is such an obvious concept for a course that I'm shocked it wasn't done sooner. Taking inspiration from the classic underground levels from Super Mario Bros, even going so far as to integrate their theme into its own music in a really exciting way, this course is consistently a blast. I love dodging the Piranha Plants and Blue Goombas, it makes good use of underwater segments, and gliding on top of the castle at the end to get those coins is super satisfying. It's just an aesthetically and mechanically solid as hell course. Not much more to say than that. The Mario Kart 8 version was better, but you know, that's kind of obvious. Koopas. You know, everyone always loves to complain about the nerfs Coconut Mall has received over the years, but to me personally, no Wii course has been consistently butchered quite like Koopa Cape. It seems fine at first glance. The same old classic you all know and love, but with an extra pointless glider. Alright, I'm down for this. But then you go into the fabled underwater tunnel, and... This is kinda lame now. In the original, underwater driving didn't exist yet, so they made this see-through aquarium-like tunnel for you to drive through. And it was magical. There was also a stream of rushing water and electric hazards for you to dodge. Yeah, that's all gone in the remake. Now it's basically just any underwater segment in any course. The youngins these days are gonna play it and not realize it was supposed to be special. What a travesty. Anyway, still a really good course. This change isn't enough to kill it. It's just... Man, I miss the old Koopa Cape so much. I never been to Boston in the pool. Boston building is a bit better and a bit worse than its original iteration. It's better because the mud is a lot more manageable than before, meaning the back half of the track is a lot less annoying to traverse through. Plus they added some optional glider sections, but those don't really make much of a difference. The big tragedy here though, is the fact that they removed the portrait ghosts in the building itself and replaced them with generic boos. I mean, the boos move around on the wall, it's actually kinda cool. But the portrait ghost, though! Way to suck out some of the character, jeez. Get it? It also just looks a bit less ominous than the original. I mean, that shit really captured the terror of Boston. Whereas here, it's a lot less dark and a lot less accurate. It's like the developers didn't even know what city this was supposed to be based on or something. The music is kind of a bop, though. They added a nice beat, and it sounds a lot better than the original. I don't know, a mixed bag in terms of the aesthetics. But it is a lot better to race on, so that's what matters most. Good stuff. Nice car! Woohoo Loop is just immaculate. Such a novel idea to take one of the coolest settings in any Nintendo game and translate it into Mario Kart. This is technically the first big crossover track before 8 really ran wild with the idea. And it's just so exciting. Seeing all the famous locales I encountered in the island flyover mode, now a part of a racetrack, the bridge, the ruins, the candle lighthouse, it's all wonderful. The music is immaculate, there are tons of hidden glider sections, it's just got the most pleasing vibes imaginable. And this also has the distinction of being the first Mario Kart course to be split into three sections rather than laps, which is a wonderful innovation that makes courses feel so much more alive. Like you're on an adventure. Yeah, this one deserves all the praise it gets and more. The courses ranked above it are just a little more unique in terms of their themes and obstacles. But I adore this one, and I really hope they bring it back. Seriously, this and Makawuhu are the only 3DS courses not in Torque. Could someone please explain why? Mushroom, mushroom.
<laughs> Let me tell you, as a kid, there was no greater mind-blowing moment than playing this game for the first time and getting to experience Mushroom Gorge on a handheld. I was dumbfounded. Like, after three years of playing it on the Wii, I was just like, how did they fit this whole course from the TV onto a tiny handheld? Wow, it was nuts. It was also the point in the Shell Cup where the game said, okay, you ate your vegetables with N64 Luigi Raceway in GBA Bowser Castle 1. Now it's time for you to eat nothing but dessert for the rest of the Retro Cups. Truly, it was a wake-up call that Mario Kart 7 was not f***ing around in terms of giving me exactly what I wanted. Anyway, how's the course itself? Still the same Mushroom Gorge as ever for the most part. I never noticed it was missing a shortcut from Wii until 8 Deluxe brought the shortcut back 11 years later, but that's still kind of a shame for the people who miss it. I'll tell you what I miss though, the bouncy look of the mushrooms. While they were still fun from a gameplay perspective, I'm never gonna get over just how flat and boring they look in comparison to Wii. I'm gonna be salty about this forever probably. And while it's super awesome to add a blue mushroom in the final part for you to glide over the gap, it does remove some of the challenge from Wii where you had to bounce your way across no matter what. But gliding is fun, so I don't mind too much. Overall, this is a great recreation of an old classic. It has its issues as a remake, but the original was so good that I gotta rank it pretty high. Daisy Cruiser is faithful to its banger original version, but with the addition of underwater segments that, much like Koopa Beach, feel so seamlessly integrated into the track design that I barely remember what it was like without them. You know that pool at the beginning you had to dodge and double dash? Yeah, who cares, take a swim now. It's very satisfying, and the same goes for the flooded break. It's super cool to go down there and see the clams and fish that have taken refuge here, as well as the Mies that are just casually underwater. Are, are, are they okay? Do, do, are, they, are they drowning? Do I, do I need to save them? Like, holy shit. Oh well. A great course with a really unique theme that even manages to surpass the original. Great stuff! This case. Donkey Kong Allow me to regale you all with the tragic tale of Donkey Kong. Back in the 90s, this ape was hot shit. He had a massively successful trilogy on SNES, and he even got his own reskinned Banjo-Kazooie game on N64. Life was good for Donkey Kong fans. And then his developer's Rare got sold to Microsoft and oh, oh my, my god! god! Bongo controlled rhythm games? Oh, oh my, my god! god! A lame ass peg climbing game? What the f- A shitty ass racing game with terrible Wiimote controls? Ah! The 2000s were not good for this ape boy. Then Retro Studios, fresh off the Metroid Prime trilogy, asked Nintendo, Hey, what if we made a good Donkey Kong game again? Donkey Kong Country Returns! The monkey is back, baby! Then Retro Studios helped out with Mario Kart 7 and said, Hey, what if we took that game we just made and turned it into a Mario Kart course? Boom! DK Jungle, certified banger! This track has everything. A bouncy flower, tiki enemies, tons of ramps, a cool-ass glider section past these angry rock dudes, the great banana, the great motherfucking banana! And that's not even bringing up how the music masterfully rearranges the main theme of Donkey Kong Country Returns. It's the perfect marriage of fun, varied track design and an awesome visual theme, brimming with fan service for a pretty cool ass game. Consider the coconut. Oh, coconut Mall! Woo woo! I'm so excited to race up the very hard to distinguish escalators and get hit by the third car in the parking lot specifically. It's gonna be great! Yeah, so the dirty little secret about Coconut Mall is that it peaked in its original iteration on the Wii, and every subsequent remake has slowly sucked more and more charm out of it. We haven't yet reached the somewhat overhated, but still clearly weakest version of this course, provided to us by 8. First, we got the 7 version to deal with. Now, I don't think the escalator difficulty nerf is a huge deal or anything, but I do miss the chaos of frantically trying to determine which is the correct one to take, and getting slowed down if you chose poorly. And the same goes for the removal of the last car in the parking lot. Not the end of the world, but it's a bit of chaos lost to the ages. No, no, no. The real thing that bugs me about this remake is just how barren the mall looks. I've seen people level that complaint against 8's version, but I feel like it made up for that with some aesthetical upgrades in other areas. Here, everything 
Everything about Coconut Mall feels like it's doing less than what the Wii version did. Like, where are the Miis that initially lined the halls of this beloved institution? There were tons of them in Wii, and now there's no one outside of the two parking lot drivers. They added Miis to the background of courses like Daisy Cruiser, but took them out of a course that actually had them originally. Like, what? The posters that had Mii faces on fake advertisements are also gone now, replaced with empty walls. And the color palette feels a lot drabber in comparison to the original. There are some other missing details, like the big spherical coconut mall sign, but I won't fault it for missing those, since they were likely cut because of the limitations of the 3DS. But that definitely isn't an excuse for the lack of Mii's, the missing posters, the general bleh color palette. 8's version has aesthetical flaws, but I think it's overall a better looking version than this one. Ultimately, however, the layout is the most important thing, and the unspeakable things 8 did to the parking lot mean that 7's still an overall better version of Coconut Mall. Just, part of me wishes they could have saved this course for the base game of Mario Kart 8, since that's a game that would have done it justice graphically. I'm a bit disappointed that one of my favorite courses in the entire series didn't really live up to its full potential here. And yet, even after all that complaining, it's still this high on the list. That's the power of Coconut Mall. Inventive concept, incredible music, fun layout, and yet, a massive step down from its Wii iteration. I like trains. Oh no 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 wait! <laughs> Holy shit you guys, it's the train course! The train course is back! I don't know why it took so long for it to return, but there it is! You know me, I'm the number one calamari desert stand on the planet. Of course I'm gonna love this remake. It's still pretty, there's still plenty of shortcut opportunities, there's still train! They even added some glider ramps, so if you have the mushrooms for it, you can glide over the train. But why would you ever want to do that? You can glide on just about any course. But where else in the series can you experience the joy of coming to a screeching halt because there's a train in your way? Pure magic. The only thing, and I mean the only thing wrong with this remake, is that you can't go into the tunnel anymore. Boo! I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world, because I never would have done that during a regular race anyway. But come on, Grandpa Nintendo. Way to be a prude. Oh well. Still a great-ass course that I love dearly. Rain fire! Airship Fortress has never been in a console Mario Kart game. Just... Just wanted to remind everyone of that fact. Anyway, they're missing out. This course continues to go super hard. I especially like how the 3D effect enhances the bonsai bills being shot in your direction at the beginning. Aside from that, it's still the same amazingly tense course as it was on the DS. I find it a lot easier to drift all the way through this ending turn here, though I do miss the way your character got awkwardly shot out of a cannon without moving their body at all. You know, gliding makes sense to add here, but damn it, the other way was funnier. Well, that does it for the A tiers. Now we're on to the top four, the S tiers. Let's -a go. Piano. <laughs> Music Park is <sighs> so good. This was of course destined to be a fan favorite as soon as everyone got their hands on it because it's one of the most novel ideas Mario Kart has ever had. A music-themed course where racing down piano keys actually makes them play? Incredible. And that's not even taking into account the electric atmosphere here. The musical instruments in the background, the piranha plants bobbing their heads up and down, the barrier that prevents you from falling off the track is sheet music, they replaced the bouncy mushroom platform with a drum. Come on, how are you not playing this course right now? The ending section where you get a chance to glide past these gigantic music notes is a particular favorite of mine. I also love tricking off the shockwaves they produce because you can time when it happens thanks to the beat of the music. Oh, because it's called Music Park. Oh, I get it. This joke only works in America, by the way, because it's called Melody Motorway in Europe. I kind of like that name better, TBH. Alliteration in titles is always better than not alliteration. Well, no matter what you call it, this is a thrill ride and a half, and easily one of the best courses in all of Mario Kart. Also, remember back when this game first came out and everyone thought this course was based on Wii music? What the hell were we on, LMAO? Do you own it? See the forest for the tree. Well, 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 how the turntables. While Coconut Mall was my number one course in Mario Kart Wii, the nerfs to its remake brought it down a couple slots here. Whereas Maple Treeway is almost perfectly intact as the S tier course we all know and love it as. And yes, I said almost, they did remove the jack-off bridge. But like, 
don't really think that would have been as satisfying when the trick controls are mapped to a button instead of aggressive Wiimote shaking. So I can live without the bridge. It had a lot of character, but gliding towards whichever of these two trees you want is nice too. Other than that, this is the same enchanting course as ever, with the music, visuals, and winding varied track design all working together to create something truly magical. This was the game that truly made me fall in love with this course, since I was too distracted by constantly falling off this one sharp tree trunk turn to appreciate it back on Wii. It was a lot easier to manage in 7, so now that I wasn't falling off every time, I realized, wow, yeah, this truly is something special. And I came to appreciate it on Wii as well once I got good at that game. You know it, you love it, it's Maple Treeway. Also in this game you can play as a tiny wiggler next to big wigglers and I just really like that now. They are a family. Waluigi? It's a really great pinball Is that a good title? They have to be like puns or whatever? Putting aside Coconut Mall's nerfs for a second, can we just admire the sheer audacity this game had to end its banana cup with back to back Coconut Mall and Waluigi Pinball? Like, yeah, no big deal. Here's two of the best courses in any racing game ever coming one after the other. There are genuinely so few games that exude as much Giga Chad energy as Mario Kart 7. Anyway, as you probably guessed from its placement, Waluigi Pinball has not been nerfed in the slightest. The original vision of this sheer masterpiece of a course is perfectly intact. They didn't change much up because... Why would they need to? Racing alongside those giant pinballs is as thrilling as ever, and it's actually a really cool use of the 3D effects, right? Re remember that? It was like the main selling point of the 3DS? Anyone? Am I the only person who still uses the 3D slider? Anyway, the atmosphere is still electric, the colors are still vibrant, the layout is as twisty and fun as ever, just... This is it, baby. This is peak fiction right here. It's a course so good, they knew they had to bring it back, even if Waluigi himself wasn't gonna be on the roster. Kinda cruel of them, actually, but oh well. Simply a course that cannot be topped. Except by... well... Yeah, I mean, obviously. 3DS Rainbow Road is a strong contender for being the single best track in the entire series. It's just untouchably majestic, offering all the whimsy and wonder of the previous Rainbow Roads, while also adding its own unique spin to the proceedings. It's a space adventure, an adventure in space! It benefits so greatly from being a three-section track, cramming in so many wonderful sights and sounds. You drive past all sorts of moons, hop on a beautiful bouncy mushroom, and then glide onto the rings of Saturn. Before you even have time to process how cool that is, you're on this big moon with craters to trick off of and chain chomps to avoid. All that excitement builds up to the final section, where you land all the boosts on this tunnel and hope you finish it off by hitting the glider ramp, because that lets you soar through the air and get boosts on these launch stars. It's crazy how this course could have easily just cashed in on Galaxy fan service, i.e. the main thing Rosalina's Ice World had going for it. Ha! Gay! But no, it used those elements sparingly in service to a grander, more unique vision. An astonishing, unforgettable experience. Maybe not quite as brutally difficult as the Rainbow Roads of the past, but it's so awe-inspiring and memorable that it's easy to give it a pass in that department. Without a doubt, the best course in Mario Kart 7, and one of the greatest of all time. And that's Mario Kart 7, a good-ass game with a great-ass lineup of courses that I have no real reason to play since 8 stole its thunder in nearly every regard. But it was a crucial stepping stone in order to get to what is, in my opinion, the best game in the series by far. By today's standards, it does feel like 8 light, but at the time, it gave us a mind-blowing level of quality in terms of its gameplay and its course selection. I had a great time revisiting it for this video. But now it's time for the main event. Everything else is out of the way, so next up is Mario Kart 8 Duo! What's that? What do you mean I forgot one of the games? Which one could I possibly be forgetting? <laughs> <sighs> Goodbye everyone, I'll remember you all in therapy. 